TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the film from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen just in case. I think we might need it. Like People be sensitive. I don't know. Anyway, uh, don't forget, man, we do got twitch.com. That's where you can catch a live stream. Username's at the bottom of the screen. Patreon, that's where we watch UK movies, UK TV shows, Premier Leagues, and anything else we can't post on YouTube, we post it there. Uh, this is... I was actually looking for bro, man. Joe Fish. I Literally, before I came online today, I was like, man, where Joe Fish at? You be having some interesting videos, but I investigated crisis on UK streets. Battle of Burnmouth. <clears throat> okay. Burnmouth, they got a they got a uh they got a W today. I mean they got a W last week versus Arsenal, didn't they? Things should be looking up around town. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. You know, ideally I'd like to meet all the people that I react to. I, when I get to the UK, I want to meet everybody. <laughs> Simple. But anyway, talk to me. Today I'm in Bournemouth, the largest town in the county of Dorset. Like many towns around the UK, Bournemouth and the surrounding areas find themselves struggling with a number of problems. Mm, it's a sea town. Okay. A huge lack of social housing, massive cuts to funding and sky-high living costs. Combine this with some of the highest rates of rough sleepers, substance abuse mortalities and antisocial behaviour to be found anywhere in the UK. This has led to a wave of negative headlines such as Iconic UK seaside town with no-go zones and locals too scared to go out after dark. Boscombe, a suburb of Bournemouth being labelled the substance capital of the south. And in a recent study, it stated the BC... I ain't gonna lie, I never ever even heard of anything about Bournemouth. So this is excellent for me. It's... it's, it's, it's it's, it's expanding my knowledge of the UK. P area has the highest rough sleeping homeless numbers outside of London. Shockingly, since this data was compiled over a year ago, the number of rough sleepers has more than doubled. In this documentary, we spend time with a leading charitable organisation in the area battling these issues and hit the streets of Bournemouth and the surrounding suburb of Boscombe, which has been labelled the substance capital of the South, to find out if they live up to the headlines. It is a seaside town. This is where you find the most rough sleepers, apparently. Like, just a little small amount of research that I've done by watching these videos. Like, they'd be the roughest, the roughest towns is on the bordering of the sea because they didn't change with the times. They expected, they waited, they waited, they waited. They thought the, the vibes would come back to seaside, like carnivals and festivals, and it never did. It's over. You can see the boarded up windows on the abandoned building that lays next to my hotel. I was in that room last night and I could hear numerous voices, screams and shouts coming from this building here. I'm now heading over to one of the leading charitable organizations. Joe, <laughs> was your window broken to your hotel room? First of all, I would have asked to change rooms. Ain't no way in the area we are humans this organization is tackling the homeless crisis that's ongoing head on on the short 10 minute walk to the charity headquarters from my hotel the signs of deprivation were clear to see there was numerous tents and signs of rough sleeping often coupled with substance abuse paraphernalia closed shops and abandoned buildings lined the roads on the outskirts and there was many people on the streets clearly under the influence of substances Dang. within 20 minutes of arriving i witnessed an overdose and revival on the streets of boscombe Hello brother, so tell me, tell me what your story is. My and... name's Stephen Smith Showers. Yeah. My father's name's Delroy Showers. Right. I come from LA, Liverpool. Yeah. Delroy. Only fools and horses, Delroy? I look like him, low-key. We do stuff like that, and we do stuff like that. Yeah. And furthermore, we're talking this for life. 
But the worst thing about it is uh, uh, no one appreciates our service. Lads are fucking walking around in wheelchairs, sitting about on their prosthetics, yeah. back to front, right? Mate? No one appreciates our service. Lads are fucking walking around in wheelchairs, sitting about on their prosthetics, yeah. back to front, right? Mate? Spunking their gyros on crack smack and all that lot. In this country, furthermore, mate, all I need to say. If you can't make it in Bournemouth, thank fuck you're not in fucking Brooklyn or New York City. We're doing, we're doing yeah. But I'm not as smart as that, you know, well. But it's been a pleasure to... I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's been... Not gonna lie, when bro said walking around in a wheelchair, he lost me. I let him finish first, because I wanted to see where it was going. But bro was moving like a Tekken 5 character. I don't know what was happening. Been a lot of screaming and shouting coming bad. from one of those flat windows where the police is outside now. As I arrived at the charity offices, I was met by a couple who had just arrived at the charity that morning. They kindly agreed to tell me their story. However, within less than a minute, one of the people I was interviewing heard cries of help coming from across the road. Without hesitation, he ran to the scene to assist in what turned out to be a substance overdose unfolding. Is he OD? He is, isn't he? Drug problem. Uh, we've seen him earlier today wandering around and he was stumbling all over the place. Really? As you can see, this seems to be a, a regular occurrence. There's a man that's passed out on the street. It seems to be OD and they're calling the police now. In the ambulance service this is right out what's that called when they od they need a um that shot what's it called side of the we are humans charitable organization it just brings it home how real the situation is here on the streets of bournemouth you see the police have just turned up now you see the man still passed out in the doorway they don't know if it's substance or if it's alcohol brother do the work that you are assigned to do absolutely nuts this just brings it to light how real this is here Bournemouth over the years has seen a massive rise in the rates of substance abuse and the issues associated with this. Bournemouth now finds itself having some of the highest numbers of substance associated mortalities in the country. There are many causes of this, but a potential leading factor is the huge increase of fentanyl laced substances and other synthetic substances like spice and crystal meth that are now flooding you. Really? Crystal meth is out there? Like heavily in Bournemouth? Is it Bournemouth or Bournemouth? UK streets. These substances have wreaked havoc in the USA. Are we about to see the same on these shores? No, please no. If meth make it to the uh, to the UK, oh my lord. Yeah, he's got a heartbeat. He's breathing. Yeah, but meth is a crazy drug. I'm talking about like the person that uses it. The side effects of it is insane. Well, they'd be picking their face off and stuff like that. Like, oh. Recovery position, even though he didn't want to, I tilted his head back. I tried to get him to communicate, and he, his eyes were just rolling back, so I just feel seen the police right back. Yeah, he's got a bottle of Lucas next to him, the of alcohol, but he smells like spice. Uh, yeah. Spice, did you yeah, say? Yeah, smells like spice on him. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got spice yeah. all back. The ambulance and get him to the hospital. Yeah, well, as soon as I see them, they were just... What does spice smell like? Drive by, I was like, no, 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 did he? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I saw them back up, yeah, good yeah. Place, fair play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, sorry about that, we did the video, as soon as I seen that, mate. next soldier in the other, he's off his nut, mate. Yeah? Yeah, he's not with it at all, I had to, it's like, fuck, he's getting gone to his back, getting for a recovery position. Yeah, that's, that's what they're going to do in a minute. Like, I have never seen, no synthetic drug you should be, nothing synthetic should be going in your body. Oh, they were arrested because it depends on what you've done. So they've got him off right now. Well, the police are with him now, and the gentleman that I was just interviewing went over and saved the day, luckily. Luckily you were there, mate. 
I go, yeah, how lucky well, that you were here now. I'm trying to get him onto his back because he was refusing. I just grabbed my leg, dragged him down. So I thought, if I pull you downwards because it's a slope, I'm naturally going to onto that's your back. Crazy. That's crazy. That's, 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 that's another show of humanity out there is yeah. somebody who. Well, that's it. Like, you didn't give his side day off when he was in that position. about charities that are supposed to be he's helping straight people. up on his feet across he the road. Was, he was quick as anything. I was already going to this town. Yeah, normally you see it on the high street a lot. Normally by now the police have moved it on because they won't have it there. But yeah, there's a massive spice bomb going around at the moment. It's coming really? in the influx. Yeah. yeah, it's mostly a spice. Bomb. Is it? Yeah, it's and a massive it's, influx. It's and awful alcohol. to see. It's really awful. That's to what see. they're doing. They're getting drunk it's... on the alcohol. So they, are they saying that spice is just now hitting more and more? Like, why is everything just now getting there? It is at the bottom of the map, I guess. And then they're smoking sea amounts of that. It's a pure chemical. So they've been doing anything like that. You know they're going to the eat. That's why I left my job. On spikes, starting and their behavior. Horrible. They've become they, they, they erratic. Turn, they turn into they zombies. Zombies, zombies, yeah, that's, zombies. that's what I've read. And then, and then they pass out, and they can pass out anywhere. That headline was yeah. they called the place Zombie Town. Yeah, and yeah, that's what it's coming back to this again. Really, this is yeah. what this is going to end up being if this isn't because we're punishing yeah, the people rather than helping them and actually getting to the solve the problem. Anyway. This is why this charity needs a massive shout out because they want to help. They don't want to judge you. They, for the first time, I actually felt like a normal human being. I didn't oh, feel mate. like people were looking down at me because I was on hard times. And for the first time in ages, it felt nice just to be seen as a human being rather than just another number. Homeless or you're struggling at any point, please go and look up this charity. We are humans. We please are humans. Look up, please look it up. I'm pretty sure a lot of homeless people don't get help because they don't like how it feels. Like, like the stairs, or they think it like people are staring. And I feel like this company, We Are Humans, they're doing a good job of making people feel like they should, like uh, like human beings, you know. If you are struggling, yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much That's for your time right. today. Right. And yeah. you, my yeah. man. Take Get on. Yeah. Here are the streets here. Oh, I won't go that far. Words, just mate. Fair play. Just being a human being. There you go, mate. And the kindness from one person to another, even just a simple <laughs> smile, that has a... I can tell they a couple. She just continues to talk even if he's talking. Like, and it does not bother her. Like, it just happens all the time. I like to see it. Chain reaction. So, please, anything you can do, a smile, a small gesture, it literally brightens everybody's yeah. day up. My first morning in Bournemouth really brought to life the severity of the situation on the streets. One thing that was clear was the warmth and kindness I felt from Jamal and Kathy, and just how much this organization, We Are Humans, means to this community. We headed inside to see the tent and other items donated to the couple by the charity and arranged for me to head over to their tent later on that evening to see the harsh conditions an ex-veteran and his pregnant partner now find themselves in. I hate to ask, but I need your help more than ever. When I film content like this, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It oh yeah, man, I like all the time. Maybe I should start commenting. It really does. There's many. There's a number of as possible. It does push. The, it does push it. Possible, and with your help, we can do that. You just touched on then. There's a there's a number of substances yeah. that have hit the streets of Bournemouth and yeah. Boscombe now. Yeah. A number of those Absolutely. will be a shocker to my audience. You mentioned you mentioned meth then. Meth. Your freely available meth. Really. Um, cracking, um, uh, and as you've just touched on, you're 20 years clean now, so you can touch you, it with a barge bar. Good man, fair Even play to you, boss. I am in the situation, you know, it's hard because, not to. It's on, because I'm homeless. I'm in this situation. I see people getting absolutely, up, you know, in hell of a state. I don't, because I, I've been there, you know. Have you I know that it's not the right path. Yes. What you're saying is trying to stay on the um, straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. Definitely, mate. Yes. Would you say you've seen a rise in um, overdoses? I, I lost three people yeah. through overdoses that I knew very well. But I lost three good mates. But you can wow. On what though? Like what did they over OD on? Verify that there is now crystal meth has arrived Absolutely. on the shores of the UK. Absolutely. Yeah, crystal meth is like manufactured, along with like um, spice, but like it's manufactured in somebody's backyard. <laughs> like they could be cutting that or putting whatever they want into it. Like it's, it's real dangerous. Absolutely. Well, Ain't nobody over there breaking bad, so... Oh. Uh, 100%. Which is, uh, yeah, worrying to say that. Very least. worrying, mate. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. worrying, mate. Keep up. Keep up yeah. doing what you're doing, mate. Oh, yeah. Keep your chin up yeah, as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm strong. I do, you know, I will do get back into that, rubbish. Good man. No Fair chance. play, boss. Another increasing problem is the county lines. lines epidemic, with Bournemouth being heavily affected. 
County Lines is where gangs from bigger cities target small and medium sized towns across local authority boundaries. This is usually carried out by children or vulnerable people who are coerced into it by organised criminal groups. The County Line is the mobile phone lines and people that are linked to organised groups that run this illegal trade. I've just received a text message from the couple that we spoke to earlier letting me know they've set up camp for the night so let's head over and find out how they live. But first things first, let's pick up some pizza and some water and take it with us. We've Good got guy. the pizzas. I've got a load of water as well in the back of the car, so let's head over now and catch up with the guys. Bournemouth is in the grips of a housing crisis, with a huge lack of affordable housing leading to higher than ever. I ain't gonna lie, Bournemouth, like, it's tough. <laughs> it sounds like every piece of everything that is going wrong in the world, if you go to Bournemouth, they got it all. You got a little bit of the drug epidemic, the housing crisis, some rough sleepers. Brand new drugs, crystal meth, heroin, crack, like they all hitting the street. Everything is happening at once out here. Demand for social housing and more rough sleepers than anywhere else in the UK outside of London, leaving authorities at bursting point. The local housing needs assessment for Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole, the BCP area, says that 2,670 new affordable homes should be built each year. However, between 2019 and 2023, only 102 affordable homes were delivered on average each year. The social housing registers in the BCP area are at an all-time high, with waiting lists longer than ever before. In England, there are 1.2 million households on waiting lists for social housing. They're just in a random spot. Yeah, it's boy. How you going, guys? Oh yeah, I don't want to walk into one of them, mate. So you got your fire pit set out, you got yeah, the tent yeah, ready to go. We get a disposable barbecue we do, we use kindling that I buy and um, wool, um, wood wool. Nice. So we have a little fire, nothing major, just nothing just to warm our hands up. And yeah. Then we get into bed so and you've got some hot dinner for tonight as well yeah, perfect time, no worries mate my absolutely my pleasure mate what's confusing me is this woman is pregnant how can she not go to the council and get emergency housing like how are they not giving her do they want her to have the baby before she is available to get that or what that seems a little crazy to be nine months pregnant sleeping rough and finally go to the hospital and get released into housing that you got to figure your... I mean, this is wild. It's so much better than... Yeah, like, come and take a look at you. Well, yeah. Three yeah. classes, two classes, bro. Which means... Yeah, it's so much bigger, isn't it? Yeah. Look, you've actually got space. Uh, okay. They got a little front room and bedrooms. Now you can yeah. sit under yeah. shelter. Yeah. I mean, you put stuff inside inside as well. We've got a porch where to sit in the night time as well. And we can close this down and just sit in instead here. Instead of having our beds touch the side of the tent, which we had before. And get soaking wet. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, every wet. morning that's what I was waking We've up with. Wet. Side of us. Oh, so. Which for a free tent from We Are Humans, I'm literally I'm ecstatic about. Yeah, again, this is something and else then, they've done. And we've got nothing from We Are Humans. Thanks thing. to We Are Humans, we've actually got a place that we can yeah. be happy. I know, I've made it very clear it's the same mangoes as well. They're not welcome. Don't come rocking back up again. To be happy. I was just happy with this. This is a huge tent. I ain't gonna lie, but they. They tried to reach out to us again. I don't know. Did don't they bother. really? Yeah. But all they all they wanted to know was whether we were still in the same situation. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. They didn't, nothing else. They didn't update for the yeah. checklist. Yeah. 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 You know where we are. You don't actually care what's going on with us. You've never once actually offered us anything viable. Like you knew we were in a tent that was leaking and everything. You've got loads of money in your account. All you have to do is just to send me in the right direction. You don't have to do giving me any. Just yeah. send me where I can get one. Yeah. Like, or even just loan me one. I'll bring it back yeah. to you. I don't care either way. Just but, so we've got a roof. <laughs> but now, now you're yeah. set, guys. We're going to get a decent amount of sleep. Yeah, hopefully, man. Well, I mean, we definitely will. There is a bus about me. I'm going to sleep like a king for the first time in a long time. Good. Because I haven't got to worry about leaks. Good. Weather or nothing. It's taken a long time because we have got a lot of these going around, but that's yeah. like probably secure. Because yeah, that's right. The inner shell and then the outer shell. We have to put the yeah, outer shell up first. Hopefully, you're quite sheltered from, from yeah. the element, from and the wind. Hopefully, yeah, that's, that's in the whole point And the craziest thing about it is, they're in the back of an abandoned building, so you still gotta watch your back for people who are. Uh... Oh, they can't do that in the UK no more, right? You can't. You can't. Um, what's it called? Squat in private residences. Isn't this? Squatting though? You like it round here, but I've been in yesterday when the wind was coming up and over this fence, because oh. the way it was blowing, 
but with this being the way it is, it's all tethered in. It's gone yeah. It's guide roped all around everywhere. It's, it's got nearly all the 22 hooks in that it didn't need them all in, but I found places to stick them. With data from the 2021 census, the Office for National Statistics revealed staggering differences in deprivation in areas across Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole. More than 51% of households in the BCP area are affected by deprivation, with some communities in the region being in the top 2% of the UK's most deprived areas. In shocking contrast to this, other areas within BCP lie in the top 1% of least deprived and have some of the most expensive properties. It's just as an American, we don't hear nothing about this stuff going on in the UK. So we leave it up to, to, to the to powers that be. Y'all ain't got nothing, none of this going on to the average American until you get to watching and deep diving thanks to Joe Fish. See, not only in Britain, but the whole world. This division in wealth is separated by just a few miles. It's the next morning. I've arranged to meet Andrew Talbot, the leading man behind the charity, We Are Humans, to have a chat about the issues at play and walk around Bournemouth to speak with those hardest hit by these problems. So we're taking down all the food donations down into the storeroom of We Are Humans. At 10 o'clock every morning they have an open an open cafe where food is served to anybody that needs it within the community. We document how many homeless meals we get, how many breakfasts we get, how many pensioners lunch club we get. What we haven't documented is everything else we do. So on Monday, uh, total services, service users that we service was 97. Wow. On Tuesday it was 140. 140 in a day? In a day. And uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to catch up on yesterday's numbers yet. But Not all heroes wear capes, man. There's good people out there willing to help. And I feel like the government be banking on that. They be banking on the kindness of 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 of, of uh, the civilians to do their job. Like, oh, we don't got to do it. Somebody will pick up our slack. Like, I, I genuinely feel that. <laughs> Because I was very busy yesterday, um, and in some funds. Yeah, because yeah, you've got a day job as well, haven't you? If I was rich, I'd definitely donate. Because I, uh, like, like now I just you know give what I can to homeless people when they act accordingly and they don't look like they're gonna do crazy stuff with the money. But like, I would really like to like, like you know, I'm probably sure like Joe's fish like he puts links to help on the in his on his descriptions of his video like i would donate 100 percent i've got three jobs I've there got you this go job. so this is our high street it's a market day yeah um the market used to be packed right up this high street it's very dismal now almost like they're trying to drive the market out wait, wait. i later found out much of the food and supplies is funded by andrew himself and other donations thing it's very dismal now, almost like they're trying to drive the market out. Okay. Um, high rents, uh, low footfall. It's a beautiful community, um, but like everywhere else in the country, it has underlying problems that uh, have been created by successive governments. We don't have any mental health services anymore. Homeless services are pretty much non-existent. Um, you know, we've got family. I told you they're banking on civilians. To empty their bank accounts and do it for them. He's living in a hotel rooms with not enough money to live. Then we've got pensioners living in misery. And I noticed spare. so many you know, pensioners people, this morning coming to the pantry. Worked all their lives, paid for a pension because a pension ain't a benefit. It's something they paid and expected to be looked yep. at after in their old age. That's the whole point of it. Um, now it's the calling their benefit. On the means test, it? when these people have paid him for 50 years and more, it's quite shocking. We don't have safety nets anymore. It's no. broken Britain. The broken Britain. We've got a new government that everybody thought, lovely, Labour will come in, they'll change things. Did not. Um, it's not happened. They've made things worse. You know, means testing. Exactly, the whole opposite is going on. The winter fuel allowance for pensioners. Yeah, that's a disgrace, isn't it? That's, that's it. A laborer's, laborer's winter fuel payment cuts set to hit 84% of disabled pensioners. That's insane. 
See what I'm saying? Like, like they just take from the elderly. Like, oh, they're on their beds. Like, D-E-A-T-H beds. Like, they don't need it. Like, that's bogus. That's death. Them people done work 60 years. That's why I can't leave it up to the government. Like, oh, go get a 9 to 5 and put this there. Like, that it ain't even gonna be there by the time we get that age. It's gonna be cooked. Better live life while you can and hope that you can get some property to pass on to your kids because property is the only thing that's gonna hold tight. They ain't making no more of that. So, like, they ain't making no more land and stuff. You can build property, but no more land. It's gonna always hold a little bit of value. Sentence for many, many people. Yeah. Um, I just find it shocking. You know, the Labour had the chance uh, to start to turn the country around. And all they've done is turn us over. You know, and it's politics right the way. It's like the overwhelming, it's an overwhelming majority of the UK people that feel like the government has just completely let them down. Better be calm, man. Civil unrest is on the rise, it seems. Like, that's an understatement, too. The, the, all the stuff we've seen in the last two, three months. So it's corrupt. You can vote for whatever party you want, but basically, at the end of the day, you're just voting for a different clown at the circus. Facts. What really are your choices? Yep. Boko or Coco. I mean, I vote. I, I believe in voting. I believe you should have everywhere. It's shocking. It's a shocking world we live in. Over the last few years, what would you say has been one of the major causes of the decline that you've seen? Um, the pandemic. Yep. Uh, the, that. Don't forget about the pandemic. I, can, I always forget about that. But that did happen. It put a lot of people back 10 years, 15 years, like. It put a lot of people, it made a lot of people go out of business, a lot of people get to struggling. It's caused so much hurt and, you know, it's made family members fall out with each other, it's made communities divided. Was it all meant to be that way, I wonder? <laughs> Was it orchestrated that way? It's caused this cost of living crisis. But is there a cost of living crisis when you're looking at the profits of the energy companies, of the supermarkets? Yeah. It's not cost of living crisis when their profits are quadrupling. All I see in the background is hair and beauty and, and coffee shop. Um, we get less for our money. We get less service for our money. It's Thanks. just dire, yeah. frustrating. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it. You're seeing it firsthand. Right, yeah, not too bad, mate. Well. My grievance is uh, basically what I'm, what I'm going to say is I haven't got a lot of grievances, but the toilets, like, I mean, shut the toilets, people on the street. That's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. six o'clock they get shut, don't they? Well, no, they haven't been over for two days. Oh, really? Yeah, that's disgusting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you, they, got, they got like porta potties. So not only are you like blatantly playing in these people's faces, you shutting porta potties down at 6 a.m. and leaving them closed for two days. Like, bro, you not only playing in their face, but you humiliating them. They got to pee in public, poop in public, like, find places. Like, that's tough. The streets are homeless. Look at the toilet. I mean, yeah, you're walking around. Right. Right. It's disgusting. Uh, I mean, I've been caught short myself uh, in the past. Yeah, I mean, if you're, on the you're a human, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. But um, you bag it up, you know what I mean? Just like you got your pet, you know what I mean? You bag it up and put it in the bin. But, do you blind them when you blind the council? So you said you was a serving vet as well? Serving vet, uh, veteran. Yeah. It's definitely wild how they do people that serve their country like this. Like, brother, we, I mean, I can't speak to America down bad too when it comes to vets on the street. But like, come on. At least give them the help they need mentally so they can get to where they can. They can get on their feet because a lot of the hurdles be in their head. They got to overcome the mental aspect of it coming from war and re-civilianizing, -civ whatever you would call it. Like, Goodness me. And they've no support, I'm assuming? Um, they said if you're on drugs and there's not really any help, they can cut off you. To know. Bless you, brother. But I'm alright. Good man. Yeah. Keep I'll on going, mate. I'll come out of the other side.
I'll leave it with me and I'll show you what I want to do. I'm getting off now, I've had some shit. Alright. I know. So, Andy, you were just stopped then by, I'm assuming they were members of the NFA community, the yeah. No Fixed Abode community. Yeah, by NFA, you mean no fucking address? <laughs> For like turn, so yeah, yeah. As opposed to No Fixed Abode? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so uh, as you see just then, one of the guys is, he's at the end of his tether, um, he's about to leave town, he's just asked me tense, uh, he's, he's going to go travelling the coastline, so you'll probably be seeing the seaside. Yeah, now. I've met a lot of people that do uh, the same. That particular gentleman, I know what he's been through. On a like, you might as well at this point, like, if you like, go from city to city, county to county, and see what help you can get from different, like, because... They not offering in here. They not offering in a lot of places. You got to be not from here to get help. Apparently, is what what the overall consensus is saying from the these videos. I know why he's like that. Um, he has good reason to be like that. Um, I can't divulge on the film, but he really does have a good reason for that mental health it's not self-inflicted at all he does drink most of them drink you can't really go to sleep on a night without a drink uh it's it's quite difficult well i remember one point in time like i wouldn't go out to get nothing like this but we, you know we all got our own battles like i used to have to be drunk to go to sleep Maybe it's PTSD, but I was just like, man, I, I'm, I'm out of that now. But, like, some people ain't strong enough to get out of them battles in their head. You know what I'm saying? They really need help. Well, just two nights ago, I mean, it was 50 mile an hour winds. Yeah. Like, how? And two degrees. And how did he? Winter sleep pod provided by We Are Human in action last year. I wonder how much this runs. This looks people and it's only going to get worse over yeah. the coming months yeah yeah as winter hits bites beds in it will get worse and the worst thing about it is there's more people being turfed out onto the street you know generally it was like single white males mm. um now it's a whole community yeah there's pension I've, in the last couple of months i've had pensioners coming to me facing evictions um this morning as you seen the gentleman that wanted to come downstairs. Single white males have it the worst. They do have it the worst. Like if you if you oh, I was gonna say if you effed up and you a single white male or single male in general, he said white, I'm saying single male in general, working age, and you just can't get over the hump, like it's you don't go to the council, they're not giving you nothing. You're cooked. And talk to me. Yeah. He's just been served with Section 21 from a social housing provider call because they've not been doing the support that they should do. So the council's withdrawn the funding and now they're trying to evict him on a Section 21. No fault eviction. There is a fault here. There's an absolute fault. And it's the people that were getting five, six hundred pound a week to accommodate him, support him, and help him move on with his life. Um, they've failed him. I've told all these three. Sound like can't pay, we'll take it away, right? We know all about Section 21s. Sometimes they're warranted, sometimes, a lot of the time, the council is just taking away funds and and not even notified or, or people just can't make up the difference. People, I will come and represent them in court. And uh, we will let the judge know that this is not a no fault eviction. We've been joined there by one of the, the famous big issue sellers. Yeah. Carl. Carl. So tell me, Carl, how long have you been selling the big issue? I've been doing it for three years now. Right. It's over three years. I used to be homeless. I was homeless around the corner in St. Peter's graveyard and I was attacked. I had no teeth and that's why I'm in this mobility school. Oh, goodness me. After death, I was in the hospital for months and months and months. But last year I met Prince William. Yeah. I was on the front cover. With the Remember this dude. Wait, is this the same dude that they raised the money for and that got him the mobility scooter? So we have been a born mouth before, but a long time ago. 
Prince himself. Yeah. And Stephen Bartlett from Dragon's Den. Yeah. From Gatsby. Is the big issue helped help change your life? Yeah. There's Good. me, Gatler and Prince William on the front page. Yeah, he. How has selling the big issue changed changed like your life for you? I'm now the franchisee of the big issue. So oh. it's it's done really well. If you do it properly, you yeah, 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 because it is a it's a you've really got to manage it. No more, and I do it as a job now. Good man. When 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 the office is closed, I'm the born with big issue. So all the other vendors have to come and buy them off me. When the office is closed, and then I just give the money to the office. Got you. Oh, so you the plug. <laughs> But you still get a you the middleman. Um, Do you upsell it or no? So you've gone from the streets now to being a main distributor for yeah, the biggest yeah, show. Yeah. All three years, three years, mate. In three years, another another success story, brother. Brilliant. Get on, mate. I love it. Oh, that's um, how you got the sauce. The, the secret was tomato sauce. Lovely. Everyone reads about your cooking, mate, don't they? Yeah. I did see this. It, it do look good, like the pie at least. The uh, okay, these are potatoes, these are some kind of root. Oh, dang, I'm in the way, my bad. The pie look good, these are potatoes, these are carrots, and these are like some kind of root right here. But the gravy probably is what you know. People in America are like big on seasoning, and these don't look seasoned, but I'm pretty sure they're like they got salt on them, and then the gravy does the rest of the job. This look good, man. God, we ah. I need to go to a British restaurant tomorrow. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. Been stopped again, Andrew? Yeah, it's, it's hard to walk around anywhere. Uh, people know us. They know what I do. I've, I think I can call myself a local. I've been here that long now. I'd say so. Um, and I've been doing the same thing that long now. Yeah. Um, as soon as I got myself into a place, I decided to make changes to help the people who were still out there. You were once homeless. I, oh. I was homeless. I saw the big issue. Oh, this is a part of the story we didn't know about. That he was once homeless. Okay. The tent, spent time on the Isle of Wight, spent time in Southampton. So when you sell the big issue, let's get this straight. They don't give them to you. You're self-employed. You need to manage your business. So you buy the issues, you sell the issues at a higher price like any other retailer. So it's it's self-help. It's not a handout. Entrepreneurs. You're not begging. You're working. Yeah. Um, a lot of people make the mistake. Uh, I never knew that. Thank you for the education because they got the, they got like, so, I don't know if it's called Big Issue here, but they got something like that. And I'm pretty sure it's the same way you buy it. And then people are out there trying to resell them. I haven't seen it in a long time. The internet, like, has completely wiped away newspapers and stuff like that. But Please don't do that. The amount of grief I got when I was selling the Big Issue was horrendous. So I've just been introduced to you by Andrew. And you just let me know then that you you are homeless on yeah. streets of Bournemouth. So am, where yeah. where do you where do you tend to stay? Um, I sort of wander around sort of this um, round here, this radius. So I'm either on this bench, yeah, or I'm at the top um, of High Cliff. There's a bench there that I normally stay on, or just wandering around in this vicinity. Last night and the night before, the temperatures are seriously dropping now. They are, yeah. So but, what's your um, plans? Yeah, the the um, in the toilets are not too bad. It keeps us dry. So you stay it's, inside the, the public we toilets? Do, yeah, but, but the temperature, I mean, it's all right at the moment, but I know when it really seriously does drop, we're going to have a bit of an issue. So. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, yeah. do the council allow you to stay in the toilets, or is this going to be a <laughs> yeah, problem in the quite future? This is an interesting one. Some people are for us being in there, and some people are not want us out. So we're battling with some people in the it's not actually the council, it's the people working for the council. Right. A couple of people at the moment, good as gold, have no I mean they are. They're on they on the behalf of the council. Aren't they? Issue. There's other people that have an issue and just don't want us there. What would you say some of your biggest difficulties are of, of being on the streets? Um being vulnerable and just not yeah the safety aspect to it as well yeah i hear uh, that and, a lot and, and you know just just wanting to be housed and be safe and just you know what i mean yeah definitely but, 
and a feeling as well that a lot of people don't care, but there are people that do care. Yes. But but then and you know you sort of identify the people that don't. So you're battling with the people that don't, but are wonderful with the people that do. Yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. there is a lot of help in Bournemouth, more than I realised when I first came. All sort of organisations and people that just want to keep us alive and keep us with hope. You yeah, use yeah. our services. Yeah. I do. You like our services. Fantastic. What's the best part Andy, about our services? You, because because so many people this say man, that. This man, has yeah. done, and I, my understanding, has done so much for the homeless. He's our spokesman for how, what, you know, our struggles and everything. And if it weren't for him, there, there wouldn't be much hope, I don't think. You're the man, mate. What's the, best, are. what's the best part we do, though? Give us hope. We are humans. Give us hope. Oh. And, 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 and everything, you know, uh, clothes and, 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 and just being respectful, being nice. That's why it's such a good representation of what you're all that's why he knows he he came from it so he know how i feel he knows how the people normally would treat y'all so i, I mean not y'all the people how how people normally treat y'all <clears throat> when they should be treating you just like like normal human beings it's real easy to look down on a like a, a homeless person without knowing their whole situation you know what i'm saying i'm pretty sure if any of these homeless people if you gave them a moment to tell you what happened it might break you down. You know what I'm saying? Make you cry a little bit. Awesome, man. And you like our food. And his food's are cooking's best, I eh? I love you more, Andy. Oh, bless, mate. Thank yeah, you so this much. Is, this is the man. This is the man, mate. That's why I'm with him. The whole team. Do you know what I mean? I know that, Andy, but you're the spokesman. And you've been homeless. Yes. You've been there. That particular winter, um, the council removed the gentleman's tents, sleeping bags and belongings from under a flyover down at Bournemouth. That very same night, that gentleman died of hypothermia and that wasn't the only person. BCP. Won't give them... Why would they do that in the middle of the winter though? Like, go around in summertime if you have to. But like, winter? You were moving people's sleeping bags... Tense, like, what do you expect gonna happen? The, the, the idea not giving them houses, y'all had an insult to injury like crazy. There are no services, there is no safety net. Where is it? There's been an enormous cut to the funding that was received over the last 10 years. It's but so we much. can send billions of pounds overseas when we've got soldiers dying on our streets that's been abandoned by society, by the government that they served and it's private organizations andrew like yourself that i see time and time again are picking up the slack we shouldn't have to you shouldn't even have to exist i should i should I they're counting on you to exist the government is banking on you existing and doing what you're doing i live beside the seaside i should be down the beach yeah i shouldn't be in the kitchen cooking for people who are desperate i really shouldn't and i shouldn't is... have to give up every every weekend to go feeding homeless people and vulnerable people down in Bournemouth Square. I shouldn't have to do that. This, this is the government's job. This is You're doing God's work, man. And, and, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a very, very nice place in heaven for you, man, because you're like an angel on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, salute, man. You don't have to, but you're very selfless in what you're doing and... and Without you, a lot of these people wouldn't have no hope. I salute this energy. This is a council's job, but they're just not doing it. After an eye-opening 48 hours with the charity, it allowed me to see the reality on the streets and just how imperative the incredible work that Andy and the team at We Are Humans is for this community. If you feel led to support the vital work that Andy and We Are Humans are doing, the link is in the description. With winter. You know what I'm saying? I knew I already know Joe Fish putting a link in the description, man. If I had the funds, like if I wouldn't if I had the funds, I'd drop it. Come in. They I'm talking about five, six thousand. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of funds that I be wanting to drop. I wanna be making a real difference. I know anything can help, but you know could definitely do with the support after hearing so many harrowing stories what struck me is often in our society we treat animals with more respect and compassion than our own homeless 
Next time you see a homeless That's person, fair. remember the words of Kathy and just how much a simple smile or small gesture can mean to these people. Since the filming of this video, Andrew informs me that the authorities heard about the production of this documentary and they have since had meetings with We Are Humans and housed 44 people in seven days. Now, because <laughs> y'all were scared that it was going to look bogus. No, nah, but it was a... It wasn't no point in the finger type situation. It's just really letting the people know what's really going on. These are unprecedented That's numbers, good. a great step in the right direction. And with the help of my members community, we managed to get Kathy and Jamal into a hotel during a recent storm. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help the video gain traction and go out to a Salute. Good man. Joe Fish is a good guy, man.